heartache, relief. No matter how skillful you are, regardless how courageous you appear, there's one obstacle that cares for no one. Welcome to Drama on the River. Whether you love it or loathe it, the river has never failed to bring excitement to the world of poker. Fifth Street can change the fortune of a game. Made hands are crippled, and dreams are broken as the dealer reveals the final lifeline. To analyze your opponent correctly, to trap him into jeopardizing his tournament life only to get drowned at the river is by far the cruelest aspect of the game of Hold'em. I'm David Tuckman, alongside poker journalist Rub Smith, as we count down the 20 most dramatic moments in poker. Four-handed. Right. Buttons in front of Phil yeah. Ivy. It's nice. It's real nice. Cheryl Hines does not like the 8-4, throws it away, but Phil Ivy is going to play his king six offsuit. Well, four-handed, of course, you don't need just aces and pretty cards to play. Any two cards can hit a flop. Well, it's Lindgren who's hit this one. Top pair and a reasonable kicker. And he's gonna bet. He bets twelve thousand. And uh, you see here Ivy calling. Maybe he thinks maybe he can take it away on the turn. Yeah. Well, now he doesn't need to steal it because that king has made his hand. And he's a four to one favorite over Lindgren now. And he's gonna bet 25,000. And Lindgren is down to only a few outs. He needs a queen or a nine. Actual 10 will do it as well. And there's a nine. Look at that. I can't believe it. Lindgren hits two pair on the river. They check it down. And he is going to win it with two pair. Phil Ivey, in disgust, throws his hand oh, in the lock. He's huh? on a roll. Phil yeah. Ivey didn't make a bet on the river there because he knew he could only be called by a hand that was better than his. So he actually saved himself a bit of money there. I'm sure Eric was uh, hoping to check raise there. Smart play. Plug is about minimizing your losses as well as winning the big pots. Seed on the button. He looks at his 5-6 there. Whoa. And oh wow, he is gonna move all in. He's putting his tournament life at risk here on the button. And Jamie Cole immediately calls here with ace high. You know what? Three-handed ace high, I'm gonna call also. Yeah, he knows that Huxley's getting short stacked. He's gonna make a move with anything. His ace, he figures he's gonna be in front, and he's absolutely right. Although it's sort of coin toss territory here. Ace three against those suited six five. Yes, I think he's the flop. Nine eight. Four and Huxseed's still behind, but he can catch a five, a six, or a seven. Yeah, that gut shot giving him some more outs. And nervous moments, I'm sure, for Jamie Gold. And the turn is a king of clubs, and uh, Huxseed is really down to it. He's going to need a seven, a five, or a six, or he is done. Yeah, that is a three to one dog. And here it is to the river. Don't even think it, no. Oh, and there oh. it is, the six. Wow, and Huxley yeah. catches one of his that. outs, and he is going to win this pot. Ball. Unbelievable. Take it down. God. <laughs> what do we got? This is our Pro-Am, and there is the Am, although Jennifer Tilly rates pretty highly as an amateur. She does have a World Series bracelet. Well, she's going to raise it up to 15,000 with ace, six offsuit. Any ace in this uh, four-handed game is very strong. Action's over to the big blind. That's David Williams. I'm all in. And he is all in here with king-queen offsuit, putting Jennifer Tilly to the test. This is a massive overbet. 100. 120,000. And Jennifer only bet 12,000 herself. You wonder if she's going to read that as an overbet. Uh -huh. And look at that. She calls, and she is correct here. She is a favorite. Not an overwhelming favorite, but she is a favorite. And we've got a $243,000 pot. Yeah, that is a smart call from the Buxom Beauty. And she'll be looking through those shades with a little smile on her face, knowing that she did the right thing. She's roughly 60-40. Oh, oh, but not anymore. That is ugly. Yeah, she's in really bad shape now. She's going to need an ace and only an ace. She got her it's money in with the best king. of it, but she is far <laughs> behind now. I don't, don't want to sweat. Just send it king or a queen. Yeah, he's nearly a 9-to-1 favorite now, David Williams. Case of hearts. 
Ace of oh, that's a real day. If I said that, I'm real sick. <laughs> just a king or a queen. Jennifer is calling for the Ace of Hearts. She wouldn't want, want to see the Ace of Clubs at this stage because that would give David a club draw. Oh, and speaking of the devil, look at that. It is that's a jack good. of clubs, and that really, really puts Jennifer Tilly behind the eight ball. She's going to need one Ace of Hearts or Ace of Diamonds. And there it is, the Ace wow. of Diamonds. That's Unbelievable. Down to two outs, and she gets one of them. Talk about the thin end of the wedge. She got incredibly lucky there. 5% chance of winning. David gives her a sporting hug. I bet he wants to throttle her. Here we are at the Dublin All-Star Challenge. Walsh under the gun. Takes a peek at his cards. See if he likes them. Well, he's got some very green Irish chips in front of him. And look at this, he's going to raise. He doesn't have many chips, and he's going to push them all in, it looks like. Yes, he does. He goes all in with just king seven off suit. Now, remember, he's first to act. The rest of the table has to act after him. Very risky move. Well, I am the walrus. But do you have the nerve to call for 24,000? I don't know. It's one of those hands, ace-7. You don't mind pushing, but you don't want to call off your chips with that. Yeah, there's what they call the gap concept. Hands you can Pass. bet with are not the same as hands you can call Pass. with. Dave yeah. Colclough getting out of the way. Pass. Got count this. Yeah. And the action is over to Bateson in the big blind. And look at that, he's got a couple of ducks, a couple of red ones. And uh, he's pretty deep. 20, you don't like to call up your chips with the pocket deuces, but I think he's got enough chips to gamble with. Yes, he does have a big stack in front of him. Normally he would be putting these in the trash in the face of a big hefty all-in race, but it's come from a short stack player. It's legitimate to think that this is a coin toss. He may even be slightly ahead, as we can see he is marginally in front. Right, and normally you don't want to call with pocket deuces because you're either a small favorite or a big, big underdog. Yeah, and you know you're going to see overcards on the flop. So it's basically walking through a minefield with a blindfold on. You've got to hope that the other guy, he's got two overcards pretty obviously. You've got to hope that he misses them. And obviously he's thinking, thinking, do I want to risk these chips? Well, if you've got a whole load of chips and he does have a deep stack in front of him, this is a legitimate call. Yeah, I think it's definitely correct to call here. I think you have enough chips to gamble with. And, uh, you know, in a tournament, you've got to gamble a little bit. And he is going to gamble. He's going to call there. And we see a pretty much a coin toss. Bates in a small favorite over Walsh. Seven. Oh, my God. Adrian has king seven. Uh. And uh, now it's very much in the hands of the poker gods. Exactly. The players have done their jobs. Yeah. Walsh already standing up. He knows if he loses this one, he's taking a walk. And that hasn't helped his king seven at all. No, Bateson's still in good shape here with a couple of deuces. And the three there, still no help. So it has to be a king or a seven. Oh, and there it is. The king of clubs saves Walsh. And he is still going to be playing in this tournament. Bateson can't be happy. He wins 53,500. And uh, Walsh takes a seat. You're still playing, young man. Both men made the correct decisions. Short stacks, Walsh made a move with King Seven, and it was perfectly legitimate for the big stack Bateson to call him with those little deuces. Blinds are 6,000, 12,000. Button is in front of Eric Seidel. Very much one of the pros at this pro-am table. And he doesn't like the looks of 10-3. But uh, Andy Block's going to play with his Jack Six suited. Don taps the table, and uh, we're going to see a flop. Well, Don had Ace Eight off suit. He should have raised with that one. Well, he will now. He's hit top pair. Block checks into him. Don Cheadle bets. Pretty much a billboard saying I've got an ace. But Andy figures he can outplay him on the turn and calls with middle pair. Yeah, the turn brings the five of hearts, and this is when Don's really got to push him out. But look at that. He only bets 15,000. The pot is 69,000, and he only bets 15,000. That's going to give Andy the odds to stay in there and see if he can spike two pair or trips. And look at that. Just like I said, he spikes two pair. He hits the six of diamonds on the river, giving him two pair. Ooh, They're going to check good. it down, and Andy Block is going to win the pot. Should have bet out. And sure enough, Don says it. He should have bet out, and he should have bet more. 
<laughs> now, I don't deserve any applause for that. <laughs> no applause for that hand, please. Six handed here. Blinds are 1,500, 3,000. Nice look of Eric Lindgren, professional poker player. He's going to look at 6 4 off suit. He doesn't like it, throws it away. Cheryl Hines doesn't want to play. There's Kid Poker. No thanks. And over to Phil Ivy on the button. And uh, he is going to play. He's just going to call there. He loves to see flops, he thinks he can outplay his opponents. And uh, it's going to be heads up between Phil Ivey and John Juanda. Pot is 7,500. They picked a tough opponent to outplay, John Juanda. And John has hit bottom pair. They both check very quickly. Turn brings another seven. And at this point, Juanda's probably got to think he has the best of it. And uh, looks like he is going to bet. Has to be a sizable bet because there is a flush draw out there. And he bets 4,500, probably not enough, although Ivy's only got the two of diamonds. Does he think it's good? Wow, he's going to call. You wonder if maybe he thinks his ace is good as well. <laughs> and look at that. The river is the diamond, and Ivy's got the flush. It's not one to brag about, but hey, it is a flush. No, he checks, and he's smiling. He figures he's ahead, but there's no way he can really bet, because if he gets re-raised, he has to throw it away. Interesting. Call hoping for a diamond. Well, a little yeah. joke there from Phil Ivey saying he was hoping for the diamond. Nice to see him smile at the table. All too familiar to see him drag in the chips. Phil Ivey, one of the great young poker minds in today's world. Oh, and there's Alan Cunningham, 2005 World Series Poker Player of the Year. And then he backed that up with a great 2006. Yeah, finished fourth in the main event for a very nice payday. Oh, such a pretty hand. There is our Somewhere amateur. Else. Another yeah, time, so. another position. He gets out of the way, and Phil Lack won't like his 8-5. Okay. Huck seed abandoned ship, and it is an ace-10 offsuit for Phil Ivey, just limping on the button there with a strong hand. Yeah, Phil Ivey likes to play a lot of hands, and he often likes to limp in with them, kind of conceals the strength of his hand. And uh, you see Andy Block tap the table. We're going to see a flop three ways. Three of the great young poker minds in today's game. Ace, Jack, four. And uh, looks like Ivy's got the best hand here. He's an overwhelming favorite. Now Block has picked up a small piece of it. He's got second pair. And uh, Ivy's going to bet 7,000 on the button. And Block is going to call this. Pot is now 23,000. Let's see the turn. And the turn is a queen, and Ivy's picked up uh, a straight draw as well. Block's in real bad shape. Let's see how much Ivy bets. Ivy, a 9 to 1 favorite. And he bets 18,000. It's just less than half the pot. He obviously wants to milk the cow rather than slaughter it for beef. Oh, and Block calls again here. Maybe putting uh, Ivy on a flush draw. Block is going to need a jack or an 8, and there it is. The 8 of diamonds comes off, and Block sucks out on Ivy. He checks. He really wants Ivy to bet here. Ivy reaching for chips, but is he going to put them in the middle? Uh, and he's going to bet it, and I like this bet. I really do. Some people think it's a little bit of an aggressive bet, but I like it. Maybe hoping to get called by a weaker ace. Well, I have hope that true. Also, he may conceivably have put Andy on the flush draw. Yeah. Calling is something that sometimes happens when people on draws. And he wasn't raising, but you can see now oh. that, wow. that river has drowned Phil Ivy. I was so afraid you had heart. I was like, no, that's not like Andy. He wouldn't be calling that down for me. Hey, Block, you're sick. Hmm? I was going to fall the river if I didn't keep it. Yeah, I know you were. And we are five-handed here. Blinds are 4,000, 8,000. Action is over to Brecker. He's got a queen nine offsuit. And, uh, you know, in the cutoff seat, five-handed, I think he thinks it's good enough to play, and he is. He is going to raise it up here. And uh, a quick call from Roland DeWolf. No, Roland DeWolf in there with 9-7 suited. Kind of hand you can break people with. He likes that kind of hand. Roland, a very, very aggressive player. And wow, that's an interesting flop there. Queen, 10, 8, rainbow. Brecker with top pair and a gut shot. Roland DeWolf is open-ended here. He also has backdoor spades. But remember, if the jack hits, both players have the same hand. And the action is on Brecker. How is he going to proceed? Well, he's a two-to-one favorite at the moment, and he does the right thing, putting money in there. 25,000 chips. 
Now, oftentimes you like the open-ended straight draws, but you've got to realize that the jack is kind of gives it away. It's a one-liner to a straight. And uh, look at this. It's it looks like you get a raise. raise. Yeah, 105,000. Brecker stooped to see how many chips there are. And if I'm Brecker, I don't think I can go anywhere here. I've got top pair plus a gut shot. Even if I'm outkicked here, even if, let's say, Dwarf had ace-queen, I've still got a lot of outs. I don't think I can go anywhere. And Roland is known as a very aggressive player, so the all-in and the call instantaneous. Yeah, and Dwarf really had the call there. He, is, he had pot committed himself with that big raise. And uh, we're going to see a turn and a river, and let's see what happens. Brecker will be feeling pretty good about himself right now. Yeah, Dwarf can only win it with running spades or a six. Well, there's a king of spades. Wow. A lot of outs here for the wolf. I know, it's so sick. Never any blanks. Sick. Always more it's outs. So sick. To the river. Brecker trying to look as calm as possible, but he is praying for anything but a shovel shaped card. And the river is the jack of spades. I can't believe it. Both players make the straight, but the wolf makes the back door flush, and he is going to take down a huge pot. That, wow. That is a sickener. That is a real kick in the guts. And look at Brecker's wrong? face. Oh, man. Well, it's one of those things when your opponent has an open in his straight draw, you figure you're about a two to one favorite. But in that case, for a jack, you only have the a speed six. And, you just hit both, you know? and back door spades. Is, oh, wow. You shouldn't, you, at least in this game, you have like a degree of control. If you play against me in games of pure luck, you have no shot. Button in front of. Cloney Gowan. Yes, Jennifer Tilly, the lovely Jennifer Tilly always, is in the big blind. Not that hair long And uh, this is going to be a battle of the blinds here. We've got, wow, David Williams there with pocket jacks and the small blind forehands. That's a monster. He's going to raise it to 13,000. And uh, Jennifer Tilly quickly going to call with a suited jack, jack nine of spades. Well, that's a nice hand, four-handed, and she may think that David was bullying up. Oh, wow, what a monster oh, flop for both players here. I call. And, of course, Jennifer Tilly's going to call here. She's got a spade draw. She's got a pair of nines and a gut shot. Straight draw. Yeah. She's yeah. only about, you can see, she's a 3% dog here. David uh, Williams didn't want to hang around. Once he saw that oh, king, he thought, I'll find out right now where I am. Yeah, Phil Locke, interested observer watching on. There's the four clubs. Tilly is going to need a nine or a spade to win it, or a queen will chop it up. To the river. And it's a queen of clubs, and they're going <laughs> to chop it up here. You know, after the flop, they're about even money, so I guess chopping it up is only fair. Yeah, you can't criticize either player there. David was aggressive after the flop. He didn't really like the look of that king, and the immediate call would have scared him. He must have thought that uh, Jennifer fair. did have fair. the king. But uh, <laughs> instead of the cowboy, she had the flush draw, and that was enough for her to call his immediate all-in with the hooks. Yeah, you can't blame her from that call. Obviously, pre-flop, David Williams, a huge favorite. I mean, you got pocket jacks against the jack nine of spades. Really? Um, but after the yeah, flop, I'm sure Williams is, is quite happy to chop yeah, that one up. <laughs> We're here at the Dublin All-Star Challenge, where four players remain in the tournament. And with only four players, hands which you would normally put in the trash become more and more playable. Thomas Walrus, however, doesn't consider his tickets to be sweet, and we are over to Dave El Blondie Colclough, who makes it 20,000 to go. And immediately Bateson pushes all his chips over the line. Well, you can't blame him when you look at Ace Jack off suit four handed. You get that button raise, you just pointed out you don't need very premium hands to push when you're only playing four handed. Walsh is quickly going to get out of the way with Jack seven. And there may be too much value in this for Dave to fold his King-10 off suited. Yeah, I imagine he's getting the odds are too good for him to fold. And he's going to be happy when he sees that he has live cards. As long as you don't see Ace-King, Ace-10, you're pretty happy. And Tony's got Ace-Jack. Yeah, this is 60-40. Dave will have been in tougher spots than this. And whatever happens, he's still going to have a pretty impressive mountain of chips. The flop comes down the six five nine. Six, nine. Well, there's no help Two to anybody. Hearts. So the ace jack Doesn't still in front everybody. stretches his lead. Well, there's an Doesn't eight of spades the there. That is going to give Dave some more outs here. He can catch a seven to catch a straight. And there it is. Look oh, at that. The seven of hearts. How cruel is that? Oh. Bateson can barely believe it. The moustache oh. wilted 
You can't wait to shake hands and get out of it. Yeah, you'd almost rather just... Huck Seed there with the Ace-5 of Diamonds on the button. Definitely a playing hand. Even more so on the button, and he is going to raise it up to 45,000. Action over to young phenom Jeff Madsen. He's eyeing him down, but uh, he is not going to play. And there we have world champion Jamie Gold. He's got the King Jack offsuit. The contemplating, thinking what to do. I'm all in. And he is all in. Wow. He is going to put the heat right back on Huxied. What do you say? At 100 and probably 130 more. Right. Suddenly that ace five suited doesn't look so pretty. You know, once again, we always point it out. It's a nice hand to push with, but you don't really want to call your chips off with it. But if he makes the call here, he will be correct, and he'd be about a three to two favorite. He has to worry about the bigger ace, because then he would be a hefty dog. All right, obviously, Jamie Gold could also have a middle pocket pair, something like eights or nines. But he is going to call, and he's in good shape here. Wow. I, I, was about, I was about to push with Ace-8. I Ace-8. Madsen saying that he has folded an Ace. That's one of Seed's ants, should he require them. This has gone down the swanny. And there's the flop, Queen-5-3, and uh, Huck Seed's got a little piece of it. Nothing there for Jamie Gold. He's going to need a king or a jack or some sort of running card. Uh, and he is down to 25% chance, or he is out of the tournament. Watch well, it be a 10. And look, it is. Oh, there it is, the 10, the 10 of hearts. It's the up and down straight draw for Jamie Gold. <laughs> a lot of cards for him. He can catch an ace, a king, a jack, or a nine here. Still only 30% chance of hitting it, though. And it's there an it is. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. unreal. Well, some people at the World Series in 2006 oh, were speculating that he must have sold his soul to the devil. He hit so many cards. And watching that, you've got to believe this guy has got luck on his side. And poor Huck Seed, the recipient of a rather tough beat. Always on the river. <laughs> Oh, the lovely Shannon Elizabeth. She made her name in uh, the movie American Pie. Yes, I remember the scene very, very well, and I am personally grateful that it wasn't Andy Block I had to see stepping out of his underwear. Likewise. Well, Andy Block likes what he sees here. He has Ace Jack suited, and he's going to raise it up to 11,000. And uh, Shannon Elizabeth likes her Ace 10 as well. She's in bad shape, but she's going to call. Action over to Gavin Smith, who also has an Ace. He's seen enough. He's pushing all of his chips in. No messing there from Gavin, an aggressive player, fairly short stacked. He thought, this is my moment. And the pressure is now going to be heaped upon the other players at the table. Gabe Kaplan giving some running commentary, asking how much it is. Andy Block, if he only knew, he is in great shape here. He has a bigger ace than both of them. His, his ace is also suited. And uh, the MIT graduate is figuring out the odds. This is really a math the crowd question stands here. up in anticipation. <laughs> I would love to do that. Part of the famous uh, blackjack card counting team. You've got to reckon that he has a head for figures. That's for sure. Yeah. Not sure he has a head for that hat. Once again, agreed. There we go. He is going to call. I'll let you do it. Puts his chips in the pot. Shannon Elizabeth wisely steps aside. She's going to be very happy with that decision. She's going to see the ace jack, and that ace 10 will feel like a world class lay down to her. Exactly. Andy Block, a overwhelming favor here, 70 to 22. Obviously, doesn't add up to 100 because they could chop it up. The pot is 127,000. I know. Gavin could be drinking that water at the last chance saloon. Not sure whether they serve mineral water at the last chance saloon, but if they do. He's drinking it. Well, there's the flop, queen 6-6. Six, six. Now, Gavin needs a nine to win it or a queen to chop it up. Yeah, that would give them two pairs with an ace kicker each. And the turn brings a 10. Still no help here. Gavin Smith is down to his last card. He's getting a nine to win the pot or a queen to chop it up. A 10 would also chop it. That's my 10 that I needed. Yeah. Shannon pointing out that she would have made the 10s. Oh, she would have... 
<laughs> Trips, but they've split the pot. Yes, wow. Look how fast Gavin Smith's hand yeah, went he in to get his chips. He was so relieved to bet anything out of that when he saw what a huge dog he was. Yeah, and Shannon Elizabeth obviously bemoaning. Why didn't I call? Why didn't I call? That, that was is good for the show. I should have made it. And once again, we are here at the Dublin All Star Challenge. <laughs> Full table there. Was that good, was it? Eight runners. <laughs> that obviously means that they're going to have slightly better starting hands to get involved. And of course. And uh, Vera Duffy, very, very short stack. She's going to have to pick up a hand relatively quickly. <clears throat> yes, players have arrived at this table with different chip stacks. All people are not born equal at the poker table. Pass. Action over to Adrian Walsh, who looks down and reaches for chips. And he is going to put in a little raise there. He makes it 6,500 to go. And he's got two tens. Good reason to raise it up there. Mm -hmm. Action's over to Vera Duffy. She is short stacked. And she is contemplating what to do, what to do. And she is going to move all in there. You know what? With ace, queen of hearts, can you really blame her? She's I'd have done it even faster than that, I think. Exactly. And she moves all in. Now it's another 6,500 on top. It's only uh, 12,400 total. It's an automatic call with the tens. Yeah, it really is. And uh, we're pretty much going to see a race here. It's going to be about 50-50. Normally the tens would be a favorite, but in this case we've seen a couple of tens folded. So uh, Vera Duffy becomes the small favorite. Yeah, but she hits an overcard. There's really very little Adrian Walsh can do about it. Here comes our flop. Oh, I said if she hits Anna, she's hit two. Yeah, and, and, and Walsh is almost drawing dead here. It says 14%, but it's not even that good because there are no tens left in the deck. And there's the jack. Oh, wow, he's got a little hope now. Walsh can catch a king and only a king to win this. They're both smiling because they've both seen it. Oh! It I can't believe it. Oh, running straight cards. Oh, that's that, unreal. That is truly appalling. Oh, no way to treat a lady. My God. Obviously, she, she doesn't know what a bad beat it was because she doesn't know the other tens were dead, but we do. Oh, wow. That really is unreal. We are in Las Vegas at the Win Championship. Cloning Gowan there on the button. She's got King, Queen of Diamonds, and she's going to limp in. Kind of a curious move. Well, that invites Christy Gazes to make it up from the small blind, and Ted Forrest checks. We'll see a flop. Three-handed to the flop. And you can see that. Wow, look at that. All hearts. Queen, Jack, eight, and Christy Gazes has flopped the flush, and like a pro, she bets right into her opponents right away. She's only got a six high flush. She doesn't want to give up any free cards. And uh, Cloning Gowan does not have a heart in her hand, but she's going to call here. She's got top pair. Top pair with a decent kicker, and she obviously doesn't believe Christy Gazes. Jack of spades on the turn doesn't really change much. Christy still way ahead. You can see her 90% to win this hand. Cloney Gowan is going to need either a jack, a queen, well, to that, win this pot. Yeah, that's it. She'll have to make a full house, one of the best hands you can make in Texas Hold'em, to get away from this. She is in big, big trouble. Essentially, she's got four outs. Christy has not taken her foot off the pedal. She has continued to bet, putting the heat on Cloney, and Cloney calls again. Wow, does not believe the flush. River card. To the river. Oh, wow, and it's a queen. And that basically just makes Christie's hand worthless, completely worthless. You know, you've got to assume that cloney has got at least a queen in her hand, and at this point, she's definitely got a full house. There's a double-paired board out there. Yeah, Christie did the right thing. She bet when she was in front. The only thing now is, can she fold when she's behind? Well, you can see the frustration in her. She knows, she knows she's been beat on the river. And, uh, you know, she played it like a real champion. She bet her hand, and because she bet her hand, her opponent did not put her on the flush. Uh, she got two calls from Cloney while she was ahead. 
You know, nothing she can do about that. She made her opponent make bad decisions. She just got unlucky, but she's got away relatively Mine. unscathed. Mine, please. Yeah, what, yeah, you better near on that. that. And, and there's the ever talkative Littlest. Phil Locke. Must be hot or something. Phil Ivey hot. takes a peek at his cards. 4 3 off suit. Doesn't chips, like what he sees. Poorly, so my brain is Alan Cunningham. Ooh, he's got a pair of sixes Whatever there. Cool off. And uh, he's got to decide what the best move is here. He's reaching for chips. Oh, and he's making a big raise here. He raises it up to 99,000. Action over to Andy Block, who is by God, far the chip fun. leader. <laughs> oh, wow. And he is going to re-raise it. Wake up, right? Another 126,000 chips. Have. But I did raise. I never get it in these spots, but I might get it. So raise. Phil Lack is getting excited. Well, he won't be too excited by a jack dudes. No, nothing to get excited about there. Luck is out of the way. And yeah. it's just Cunningham. Yeah. And he's made the call. He's all in. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Come with this time. He doesn't yeah. care. He's a chip leader. He's a machine. This is your yeah. chance to We're going to see pretty much a race here. You can see that Cunningham is a slight favorite over Andy Block. Yeah. And we have a 270,000 chip pot. Six of spades. Oh, and there's the 10. Look at this, I thought was a straight draw. Immediately, Cunningham goes into the cellar. He's going to need to catch a six or running cards. Turn is a seven, though. There's a little bit of hope there. Yeah, you need a six or an eight. The Ocho. Six or an the eight. The Ocho would be painful. Six cards to help him out. 14% chance of winning. He's trying to look as relaxed as possible, but his heart will be thumping and he'll be thinking, why did I do that with the sixes? Oh, and that is why. Oh, oh and that is just sick. That is absolutely sick. You heard Phil Locke calling for the Ocho, and there it is. Ocho hey, giving Alan Cunningham the, the bottom end of the straight, and uh, he suddenly doubles up, and you know, he is. Wait till when you guys go on, then I'm gonna put and we are down to four players here. I know, I know Huck Seed I looks at a couple of sevens. He doesn't have many chips. And uh, really the only move you can make, he pushes it all in. Oh, Dr. Seed, Dr. Seed. Now, no this problems. is how we do it. I, put, I, I haven't looked yet. I'm, now I'm going to look. Well, that is the king crab. I love this guy. It's always, that's what I'm talking Kid. And a three, the seafood hand, they call it. Sick thing is, I'm... And it's amazing, Phil Locke is actually considering making this call Holy with a king cow. three. So sick. I mean, I moved in with three entire people behind me. It's got to be a big hand, right? Small, big, move in, right, yeah. All in, it was like... Either you got me or you don't. <laughs> That's a philism if I ever heard it. I do. I either have the best hand or the worst hand. And I'm either going to win or lose if I call. That's some, that's some deep, deep <laughs> insight there from Phil Locke. I have 410 if I fold. Is that really possible? Can I have 410 if I fold? I can have 410 if I fold. There's 1.3 million in play. Well, you'd, you'd think I, I'd almost rather call with 5 wow, three than King 3 because it's so easy for my king to be dominated. Come, which I'm crushing. And, you're going to deal uh, with a lot of. A lot he's of a hands. gambler, though. Yeah. So I call. All this I'm chatting, all he said he's yeah. calls. Oh, wow! What the? I mean, uh, you've got to applaud Phil Lack for for asking the questions, for trying to get information out of Huxied with that crazy man act and all the conversation. But that's a terrible read and a terrible call. Well, you can applaud him, but it's not the right read here. He's only got really three outs. He needs a king because the three doesn't help him. I know it's. And you can see that he's a big underdog. Well, he's picked up a gut shot. You can catch a deuce. Yeah, that's a horrible flop for Huck Seed. Yeah, he's done everything right so far. He's put his money in when he was way in front. He's been called by Phil Lack with one of the raggiest hands you're going to see, a king three. Well, no help there. Eight of hearts on the turn, and Phil needs a king or a deuce, or he is going to double up Huck Seed. And here it is. Surely not. Surely what a big hand. I play bad. Just give me, like, a queen and give him the chips, you know? Give to the river. The oh, oh, wow. Oh, and the river's a two, and Phil Locke falls down in excitement. I can't believe it. Well, he is not the only one having to pick himself off the floor because I can't believe he called it, and I can't believe he rivered it. You, know, you and I both wondering why he called an all-in with King 3 offsuit. Maybe he knew he was going to make the straight. Yeah, he's speaking to higher powers than you and me. Welcome back to the Invitational from Monaco. 
We have five players left. There's Phil Ivey. Always sharply dressed. Ivy's all in. And he's making an effort with his pocket sevens, those walking sticks, all in. Well, I like the move. One of those hands you do not want to be calling your There's chips off with, but you can move all in with it. Now, Juwan just puts the test here. He's got ace, eight of diamonds. That's one of those kind of gap hands. Do you really want to call your chips? I don't know how much I got either. 176. Yes. Ivy all in for 176. And John Duanda has him covered, but does he have the mustard to call with ace eight? Yeah. He's going to figure he's up against either a pair or a big ace. Mm -hmm. So at the very best, he's probably 50 50. I don't think he can make this call. Well, he, doesn't want to he doesn't want to double up the dangerous Phil Ivey. Yeah, there are players at this table who will play fast and loose, but John Duanda tends to be a more tight, aggressive player. Well, talking about loose aggressive, it doesn't come any looser and any more aggressive than the great Dane himself, Gus Hansen. Yeah, but even he couldn't call with 10 six of clubs, can he? Well, I've seen him call and bet with worse. I'm just thinking about it. Well, that all in very early position. He may think Ivy is sitting there with Come pocket threes, three pocket twos, something he is in with a chance of winning. But you're right. He's short, he's short stacked. He's going to find a better spot, surely. You'd think so. I mean, he's only got 10 high. I mean, if he calls off his chips here, he can't possibly be ahead. Now, you see that he doesn't have many in there. Maybe he thinks he's pot committed and he wants to gamble a little bit. Yeah, he's had to pay a blind, so he may think, I'm going to put good money after bad. What he is trying to calculate, I have no idea. Well, look at that. He goes, what That's the heck? I'm putting in. the chips in. There's an empty seat on the front row. It's all in for 56. <laughs> and the devil fish, oh, who also has an ace. Yeah, I don't think he can overcall though, and he is not going to. He's going to throw it away. And two sevens for Ivy, Ivy. way ahead here. Shows the sevens. Ten six of clubs for Gus. And I mean, well, Ivy Gus sevens block Hansen favorite, straight, right? and Hansen's only got one overcard. He's in really bad shape. Yeah, this is thin stuff. Oh, Hansen's got a hook for clubs. Seven. For and a look at that. A Ivy ten. hits a set right away. It's pretty much done with. Well, and there a is a 10, one but as you say, one Ivy club. now a massive favorite. Over 9 to 1 in charge. Turn card is another club. Oh, no. Hanson gets clubs. backdoor clubs here. This one would be disastrous. Get the deuce of clubs. Oh, oh, oh my. He calls it. There it is. The deuce of clubs. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ivy way ahead <laughs> pre-flop. <laughs> He's a monster favorite <laughs> on the flop. <laughs> and Hanson <laughs> catching running clubs. And look I at Ivy, he is just stunned. Favorite. He this cannot believe it. Wow, Gus Hansen tries to give him chips. Poker is such an ugly game sometimes. You do everything right and you still get sucked out of. Well, at least it's amused Helmuth and Matasau watching from the aisles, giggling away at Hansen's good fortune. He's still doing Star Galactica. Oh, He's five players left here. He's still, still doing a lot. He's doing plenty. Johnny Chan he's doing, he's small the blind there. And Sean Shaken. Shawshank, right? No, 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 no. Oh, that was on somebody else. I'm not a movie buff, so. No, no, you're, you know, you're, you're on the right Action track. You're thinking on about um, Arius American there ten. with the ten. ace I'll 10 offsuit. And he's going to raise it up to 10,000. And that bet should be enough to get rid of his fellow thespian. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes, the amateur holds his yeah. hand. Get a lot of hands over there. I. Thank you. <laughs> Shake not interested, nor is the Orient Express, but the mouth, who is actually dominated, calls. Hello, sir. Trying not to battle you, brother. Good, Good luck. We're going to see this flop two-handed. And the flop comes out ace, deuce, nine. And look at that. Matasau has two pair and is in command of the hand. Arius could be in trouble here. He's got top pair. Yeah, he's digging his own grave with that bet. Yeah, Matasau checked it. He looks like he's going to check raise him. And sure enough, he does. He check raises the minimum. I'm all in. Call. Oh, my God. He's mm. overplayed that ace-10 horribly, and he can see now that he really is the ten, yeah. in the mud, and he's so. up to his chin. He's going to need to catch so a 10. It's a long ways from over. Yeah, he's in really, really bad shape here. Zach scenario online the other day. Running deuces would yep. get him out of trouble. Hello. Arius watching on. 
hoping, praying for a 10. <laughs> on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a queen on the Ooh. turn. No diamonds out there for anybody. It makes very little difference. Now, Arius can catch a queen now as well. Yeah, ain't seen anything if he ain't queen or a 10 to win this. <laughs> feeling for you, boy. Come on now. Game winners for me. Well, Mattisau very famously once said, There is no justice in poker. Oh, and there's the 10. What did I say? He was right. The mouth absolutely kicked in the out. teeth. Two pair, ace 10. I think you jinxed him when you said there was no justice. Unbelievable. He's on his way out. And he has to go past his arch enemy, Sean Shake Hands. Mike. Mike. Mike, come cry my shoulders, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, I you ain't gonna bother me. See, I, I lose every, every hand I play every day like that, so I'm just not you're phased. Bad That's why you lose, Mike. It doesn't even phase me. You're right. I expect to lose it. But I'm kind of trying to play some Chinese, so nice, bro. Man. Don't trip. You think I don't? <laughs> you're just an idiot. Be quiet. Five players left as they battle it out on the felt. Phil Ivey under the gun. He's not interested. Richard Brody, he spies ace 10 of spades. That's probably going to be good enough to play, and he's going to move all in. Button gets out of the way. Alan Cunningham gets the way. And Lane, back to back flack. Oh, he's got oh. two black jacks. He's certainly going to call, and there it is. He moves all in as well. Yeah. And he is in command of the hand. We are off to the races, and Lane Flack has got a bit of a head start here on Richard Brody. This is the day you've been waiting for your whole life, Richard. I think I just beat Jack's full. <laughs> yeah. Lane's saying, I hope you can beat Jack's full. He's predicting a full house for himself. Well, there's confidence. I dare say if he makes a full house, he will walk away with the chips. Jack is oh! I, I, I don't have to explain. That ace must have been scary, but the Jack was right behind it to put Lane Flack way back in front. And Brody in really bad shape there. Look at that, only 6% chance of winning the pot. Oh, he's got a little better. He's got the ace in the turn. He is going to need another ace, a 10, or a deuce on the river to win this. 16% chance of winning the pot. Doesn't look good. Ace, deuce, 10. Well, he knows he's drawing thin. Oh! Ace! A duck on the river. Oh, my God, and that is just... Devastating for yeah. Lane Flack. Brody cannot contain his excitement. He jumps out of his seat. Lane Flack, the professional. That was sick. Nobody said it was going to be easy, huh, kid? Nobody said that. Richard Brody has really landed a knockout blow. <laughs> Eric Lindgren in the small blind there. Andy Block in the big blind, waiting for the dealer to dole out the cards. There's David Singer. He's under the gun. Takes a peek at his cards. He likes what he sees. He's got pocket deuces there, a couple of red ones. And he is going to put some chips in the pot. Action over to Shulman. And uh, he's quite a gambler. Queen, deuce of clubs? Eh, why not? He's raised it up to 25,000. But he has walked in to the bullets. Yeah, Eric Lindgren there. Can you pick a better time to have pocket aces there? Someone's just 60. raised into you, and he says 60,000. Let's see what you're made of. Tempting enough, he hopes, to get a call. And Andy Block, oh my, he's got aces too. <laughs> How many aces are in this deck? There's about a 221 to 1 chance of picking up pocket aces. They've both done it. This is going to end up with fireworks. Like all the in. blue touch paper, stand well back. He says all in. Yeah. Well, that's done Shulman a favor because he I might got have got him again. trouble I against Lindgren. Again. He's called and <laughs> they both call and they both laugh. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, I've actually lost this twice. <laughs> aces and aces. I don't know what it's almost bound <laughs> to be a chop pot. But as we know, hard to believe. Yeah. Poker. <laughs> yeah. what are you do? Strange oh. things can happen, yeah. David. Yes, for sure. Now the nightmare situation here. Every poker player knows it, as if, uh, if I call, a flush comes out. And there are two spades, and Lindgren's got a oh, tiny breath hey. of fresh air. Yeah, Lindgren is free rolling here. Block cannot win the pot. Oh, and there's another spade, the deuce of spades. And you can see it. One time. Block is sweating it out. You know, I really like Block Andy, needs to dodge a spade, <laughs> or he is going to be out. Andy Block has got a little LED display that says, shut up, Mike. 
Now, normally that would be because Mike was rattling away in his ear. Mike, at this time, is just giggling sick. and making whooping noises. He's praying for a spade just so he can laugh about it. Pocket aces against pocket aces. If you lose that one, it's just not your day. Oh, and there it is. Oh, oh he, rolls, he raises hand his hand up. What can I do? I go all in with the best hand in poker, <laughs> and I get knocked off the horse. Well, unlucky, Cowboy. Yeah, not much you can do there, huh? The best you can say is that Andy Block now has a pretty decent bad beat story to tell. Bad enough when you lose with pocket aces to any hand, but when you lose with pocket aces to another pocket aces, that's when you got to hang them up.